Ringwalk Danny, BoxingVoice.com, here with the very legendary Mr. Edward, Edward Hearn. How you doing, Eddie? Doing good, mate. I'm at the Fontaine Blue in Las Vegas. Congratulations. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. You're making the debut yeah. for the property. Yeah. Obviously, first boxing event ever. Uh, did that play a part in it for you? I know you like to be the first to do a lot of things. Was that part of it for this one? I think when you do what is, I guess, a smaller show these days, and you're gonna do 3,000, it's better to come into a 3,000 arena than go into a 10,000 arena and sort of box it off, drape it off, you know? So these kind of shows are really well suited to Las Vegas, to the Cosmo, you know, um, the Fontaine Blue now, to other smaller arenas in the city. And it's a really good night of boxing. Like, the fights are very competitive. You've got 81 and 0 in the two co-main event bouts. Um, and a lot of our younger talent looking to step up now and make a name for themselves in the sport. Now, not that long ago, you had your first um, American signed from the start world champion yeah. and Ray Ford, who is here. Uh, Diego Pacheco is another guy that yeah. you, you guys have had from the beginning. How excited are you for oh, what's to come for Diego? So excited because I think he's so good and I think his mind is so strong. Like I really feel like he's you know a consummate professional. He's exactly where he needs to be in terms of you know his mindset for the sport of boxing. Um, I think in his last fight against Caceres, he really showed something different. You know, a chin, which is important. Some dog which is very important because we know he has the fundamentals. Right. He's a six foot five, 168 pounder that you know, he's going for his 10th stoppage on, on a row on Saturday night. So I just feel like it's important, although he's 20 and 0, not just to headline him in big fights, headline him in big fights. Just allow him to take this kind of treading water fight just to, to, to show what he's been learning in the gym with Jose Benavidez. And I believe that he's the future of the 168 pound division. In your main event, obviously, IBF eliminator yeah. to, you know, the winner of Matias and Paro, which is in June. A uh, lot of opportunities. Obviously, you know, the winner of Haney Garcia would be another opportunity yeah. uh, for Richardson Hitchens. Um, how excited are you right now just for the 140 pound oh, yeah, yeah. division? You know, the division is hot. A lot of the top talent and you're doing yeah. business with them. It's definitely the best division in the sport right now, you know, and we've got a huge investment in the division. Obviously, Devin, Subriel, Matias, you know, you've got um, Dalton Smith, you've got Regis Progre, you've got Jack Cattrall against Josh Taylor coming up for us, you've got Richardson Hitchens. And, you know, Hitchens, I think, is a guy who can mix it with all of those top guys in the division. Obviously, profile-wise, he's got to make the performances and put the performances together that are going to get people screaming and shouting his name. Everyone knows knows how good Richardson is, but if he can go in there and do a job on Lemos, you know, and actually stop him and make a statement, I think he'll be good. I think Lemos is very tough. He's 29 and 0. He's going to come to fight, and I think it's going to be a great fight. April the 20th, a big one in New York, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia. Uh, obviously, your involvement isn't what most of us would have liked it to be, but you're involved nonetheless. How excited are you? And I mean, what are you expecting? Obviously, this has been a very unique promotion to say the least. Yeah, I'm, I'm there as, you know, someone who works with Devin, um, has worked with him for a long time, a good friend, and I'm, I'm there to see him achieve more greatness. You know, I think he's one of the best per people in the sport of boxing. I think he's one of the hardest workers in the sport of boxing. Um, I think he controls Ryan Garcia and stops him. And you know, we're two weeks away tomorrow. There's a lot of people felt like the fight wouldn't take place. People in New York need to realize this is happening and this right. is a mega fight. So I saw Devin yesterday, switched on and um, ready to show the world how great he is on April 20th. He tweeted out after the gym that uh, he told you he's not vacating anything yeah. and that he wants all the smoke. I mean, what fights can you make for him uh, past April the 20th? Yeah. And would you like to make for him, obviously? I mean, look, I said that because I felt like he might not fight Sandor Martin because he might just be chasing the biggest fights. But Devin's also chasing legacy, chasing belts, keeping belts, going for undisputed. Let, let, me, you know. let me stop you. I haven't spoke to Mauricio, but I, why is he... Why did he have to pay step aside when he took the belt from a champ? Isn't he given a year to to yeah, defend the, that the belt? The problem is, is sometimes you get positions where going into pro gray against Haney, Martin was already the mandatory, mm. right? So to allow pro gray v Haney, you have to agree that the winner fights Sandor Martin. Mm. Then now you're doing 
Devin against uh, Garcia. Garcia. So you have to make sure that the guy who's been ordered to fight is, is happy. And that's when a commercial deal is reached between the parties, which was next time's going to be even harder. You know, at some point, Sandor Martin's going to say, I don't want any money. I want the belt. I want to fight. I want to test myself. So, you know, if Devin wants to keep the belt, he's likely he's going to have to fight Sandor Martin. And I said to him and Bill yesterday, maybe we just do a quick turnaround fight. You know, if you could knock Ryan Garcia out nice and early, let's go back to the bay in the summer and, and make that fight with Sandor Martin. And what do they know? say to yeah, that? Yeah, you know, look, everything's about money. But also, they, they know that's not a mega fight. For sure. But if you want to keep the belts, and I think he should. I think he should be chasing the unified championships, chasing the undisputed championships. You know, we've got Subriel Matias. You've got Isaac Cruz. You've got Teofimo Lopez. There's some tremendous fights to be made at 140. And I'd, I'd like him to, to keep hold of the belts. I liked what I heard from him yesterday. How difficult is it knowing that he'd have to go practically to three different promoters. I mean, obviously, Matias being with uh, Matchroom, you got uh, Tio and you got Sandor with Top mm. Rank, and then obviously now Pitbull over on the yeah, PBC look, Devin's side. made a, a good business of, of, you know, making the right business moves, and Bill's done a brilliant job for him. Um, I would like to see Matias fight Pitbull Cruz mm. if Matias comes through Paro, which is a tough fight, you know? Uh, I think that's a brilliant unification, Mexico against Puerto Rico. Does PBC I'd sit down with you to make hopefully. that fight happen? I mean, you know, I, I think now with their lack of shows, maybe they'll be willing to do business with other people. It makes sense. You know, you've got Mungir against Canelo is on PB, he's on Prime and on DAZN. So why can't Isaac Cruz against Matias be on both platforms, you know? Um, let's make it happen. Let's make some money for the fighters and let's let them achieve their dreams. Now, no, uh, limited on time. Do want to ask, though, recently just had a... Uh, Lost purse bid, Eddie. I know. I know. Lost purse bids sometimes are saddening and sometimes they're strategic. Mm. But uh, what's the latest and greatest with the undisputed champ, Alicia Bumgarner? Um, I know she's still under matchroom contracts. So. Yeah, she has, she has one fight left with, with us. Um, we lost the purse bid to Nelson, who's a manager, which is a bit of a strange one. But um, and you know she'll take that fight. He'll put that card on with Delphine Pursuit, which is a good fight. And we're talking to Keith Connolly um, about extending her agreement with us. Alicia has been um, an important part of our business in America. We've had some amazing nights with her. Of course, the Terry Harper victory, the Michaela Meyer victory, you know, becoming undisputed at Madison Square Garden, giving her the homecoming fight as well against Leonardo too, which was a great fight as well. So we're keen to progress that relationship. I think she's a star in the sport. It's got to work for everybody. You know, she's had a rough time over the last, what, nine months. And, uh, you know, we're here to support her. It's got to make sense for everybody, including her. Um, so after she's finished the, um, the fight with Pursun, we'll hopefully continue those, those talks and, and try and make something happen. Eddie, pleasure as always. Uh, look forward to more big shows. Uh, good to see you, mate. Give us a country we ain't been to that you'll be, be in this year. Oh, good question. Well, Puerto Rico. First, because okay. we're going there June 15th. Never done a show there. Looking Somewhere in Africa, I think. I think we'll, we'll be in Africa at some point in 2024 as well. So. With Teja? Yeah. Poss no, possibly. Possibly. We'll see. All right. Eddie, thanks again right, for the time. YouTube family, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.